So shout out to Jaime October for uh, addressing the issue of rankings. I was looking at a video that was by David Griezmann, and uh, he was interviewing the WBC president, Mr. Sullivan, and uh, they were talking about rankings and why is it that the tournament that's going to be hosted by the WBC, there are two tournaments, they're super welterweight and welterweight, why these particular guys are there, why is the tournament being run the way it is? One of the things people need to understand, because a lot of fans, they just lump all the boxing bodies together, the IBF, the WBA, the WBC, the WBO. You have to understand, I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again, that not everybody's registered with all four bodies simultaneously, okay? And I'm going to give you a perfect example of this with the heavyweight division. You know, when I was listening to the link from Pugilist Report, which is great, to just hear the media talking with Mr. Suleiman and almost in a sort of informal setting, they're going back and forth. It's very interesting, and I advise you guys to go check it out. Futurist Report covered it, also David Griezmann's coverage of it. Both are equally as interesting. And um, unless you know a bit more about sanctioning bodies, and I did a couple pieces on them, so you guys can understand how they function, how they operate. Unless you have actually covered sanctioning bodies or understand their inner workings, as a casual fan, you're going to always think that they're being willy-nilly with certain things. Now, to be honest with you, at certain points in time, they are somewhat willy-nilly with how they go about doing things, you know. But at the same time, there is a method to what you think is madness. So let's just go into this first and foremost. You cannot mix up the rankings with the WBC, with the rankings of the WBA, with the rankings of the IBF, with the rankings of the WBO. They are separate rankings. And unless the boxers or the athletes that are involved in those rankings are actually registered with one or more sanctioning body, the lists are generally not going to have the same set of names on them. Now, for instance, Ness Gibbs from The Boxing Voice, he stated that Luis Ortiz should be ranked above Anthony Joshua in the WBC. Well, let's have a look, shall we? If you look at the WBC rankings, you will not see the name Luis Ortiz there. Do you know why? he's not registered with the WBC. He's not part of the WBC's pool. He's with the WBA. And when you look in the WBA, he's actually the number one contender to Ruslan Chagaev's title. So if you look at the rankings, Luis Ortiz in the WBA, ladies and gentlemen, he is ranked the number one contender to Ruslan Chagaev, as he ought to be. But in the WBC, Alexander Povetkin is the mandatory for Deontay Wilder. Okay? Anthony jo Joshua is next in line, and as uh, Mr. Sullivan was saying so correctly, he has to face an eliminator, whoever it will be, to become the number one mandatory. And that's just the way the WBC operates. When we deal with the WBA, they may operate slightly different, the IBF slightly different, and the WBO. So to answer Nestor Gibbs' question, why doesn't Luis Ortiz, why isn't he ranked above Anthony Joshua? It's because Luis Ortiz is ranked in a totally different governing body called the WBA in mixed martial arts. You have, say, for instance, Strike Force. You have Bellator, you have the UFC. There are three separate entities and three separate bodies with their own rules. But this is the same thing with the WBC, WBA, IBF, and WBO. It's just that you can have someone who is registered or participant in one or more of these bodies. For example, if we look carefully, Vladimir Klitschko is a part of the IBF and he's also a part of the WBA. He should also be Yes, he's also part of the WBO. And this is because he had all three belts. So he's ranked in all three organizations, obviously. So I hope this sort of educates people. When you go now and you look at the different sanctioning bodies, you need to go and look at how they rank fighters in their sanctioning bodies. And we already covered the criteria for this. Mr. Solomon already confirmed this, but I will go through it once again. As with any ranking body, whether it's the ring, whether it's the WBC, WBA, IBF, or WBO, the rankings go like this. You look at the level of opposition that will be determined by if it's a top 10 opponent, if it's a well-known opponent, etc. in different divisions as you move along. The other thing you have to look at in your career is not just the level of opposition, but your win-loss ratio. How you won, if you won, if you drew, if you lost, how you lost, which means you have to watch the fights, okay? And these are the things that determine the rankings. So you will find that some of the people who are in the top 10 stay at the top 10 because they have been facing top 10 opposition all the time. If you've been in another, say, another division, you were cruiserweight, but you were at the top, Gregory Dredd, for instance, Dredd, he wants to become a heavyweight, he moves up into heavyweight, all right? He's going to be ranked a lot higher 
maybe even ahead of guys like Brian Jennings and Derek Chisora because he was a world champion. This is why Danny Garcia, he debuted, he beat Paulie Malaji, he knocked him out, and he ended up ranked number two in the welterweight division after his first fight. And the reason that happened is mainly because Danny Garcia was the unified super lightweight world champion and he beat his opponent Paul Malanaji by knockout in the ninth round. Of course you're going to move up the rankings if you're knocking out people. This is how Gennady Golovkin. He's even moved up in the rings rankings. Okay, the people weren't top tier opposition all the time, but he was knocking them out. And that's the best possible way you can win a fight is by knockout. So, or unanimous decision. So if you look at it, it's how you win versus how you lose, or what kind of losses you had, etc. And we also have to look at who you beat, your level of opposition. And these are the basic criteria that guys use to rank. And it's not one person ranking these people. It's usually, like Mr. Solomon was so correctly saying, it's usually 24 people sitting down in a room, comparing, contrasting, looking at performances, and coming up with the rankings. And usually the WBC, they have their top 40 rankings displayed for everyone to see. They have obviously have to rank 200 plus fighters in each given division as you move up in the pros. And how you move up in the pros determines how you are ranked. And when you win a regional title, for instance, uh, Anthony Joshua, he won the BBB of C title just recently against Dillian White, who was an undefeated fighter. Again, your opponent, who are they? What did they do? What's their record? Who they be? It's very important in how you are ranked. This is how we can look at, when I'm looking at the best ever rankings, we have to look at the level of opposition. Like Roger Mayweather would say, who he beat. And of course, the other question, which is very important as well, is who he faced. Because if you faced everybody who was top tier and you beat those guys, it really doesn't matter what the other guys below them are. But for the sake of styles and so on, you can only face the guys lower below them because styles make fights. But other than that, when you beat the best of the best, because it's all about the best facing the best, right? If you beat the best of the best, then obviously you're the best. And that's basically it. Okay, it's, there's no rocket science to this thing. So, at the end of the day, I just wanted to address this because I thought it was a great point. Shout out to Jaime October for bringing it up. And um, guys, I hope you have a good one. As usual, you notice this channel is about educating the casual fans. And you must always go look at the regulations that govern a boxing body to see if they really do conform to their regulations. Sometimes that boxing body may interpret their regulations how they want to and they're privy to do that because it's their organization, okay? But at the end of the day, you guys, you fight fans need to go check out information, all right? I've always said that and I mean it. You guys have a great